Quite a while ago, I made a LEGO stabilizer that a few people have asked for a tutorial on. Looking at the design, I thought I could make it simpler. So after a bit of reverse engineering, I made this. But before I get to the new design, a few people have commented on the previous video I made that camera stabilizers are unnecessary. Okay, if your camera has an inbuilt stabilizer, or you're some sort of higher being who floats everywhere, this may be true, but I shake like an old washing machine. This is me walking around just holding the GoPro camera. I found a camera stabilizer dramatically improves my filming. A few people have also commented that they can't source the Technic 3L joint. If you look closely at this joint, all it is is a centre disc with four axles protruding from it, then two identical holders that fit over opposite axles. This is fairly easy to replicate in separate pieces of LEGO. These are the pieces I've used, but you use what you have. If you mount this to the underside of the holder in place of the Technic 3L joint, you may have to play with the balance a bit more, but it will do the same job. This stabilizer has its limitations. It's very light, so it won't work well in windy conditions. But the idea of the first video was to explain the principles so that you could make your stabilizer from whatever materials you have around your home. And not just for a GoPro, but for a camera phone or another small camera. I like making stabilizers, but if making is not your thing and you're more about filming, Camera stabilizers are now so inexpensive, it's going to be far easier to just buy one. But for those of you who still like making stuff... As before, there's three parts. For the holder, you will need these pieces of Lego or similar. I make this part by building upon the underside of the Lego sheet, because I like the camera to sit flat on its base. I use a thin piece of foam because it's important that the camera fits snugly. Always push the camera to one side and make sure it's loaded in the same place every time you use it. And also make sure when held in tightly by the elastic band, the camera doesn't wobble at all. The balancing arm is made with the following pieces. Another really important part of this build is that the whole thing must be as rigid as possible. So I tightly wrap the joints with sellotape, which makes a huge difference to the design's functionality. I add cross braces to the base wrapped in sellotape to strengthen the design, and I fix the camera holder in place. I've just used what I have. So if you have longer axle pieces, for example, that's okay, but you must use identical pieces in the same places on each side of the arms. I use three 2x4 plates with holes in, joined together to fix the Technic 3L joint, and I attach this to the underside of the balancing arms. Your arms, cross braces, and holder should be fixed in the positions you see here to make balance easier. Now I have to balance the setup. Currently, it's really top heavy, so I'm gonna need to add weight to the base. Here, the arms aren't quite upright, so I know I need to adjust the weight. It's obvious when you've gone in the wrong direction. This is about right, but as covered in the last video, the balancing arms need to swing as slowly as possible. Too much weight makes the arms swing too fast. Taking away weight from the same place means the arms won't balance, so I have to create a cantilever. By adding a longer but lighter arm, 
I can achieve the same balanced result with much less weight and so get the slow swing I need. Because the weight of the camera is slightly biased to one side, to make the camera sit level, I have to also add a little extra weight to one of the balancing arms. This is all I had to add in the end. The tensioning system is made from the following parts. I start by making the holder for the balancing arms. I then make two sets of arms made in the same way but from different lengths of Lego, which I join together. Now I push the axle from the balancing arms into the front of my tensioning system and add springs or elastic bands until they support the weight of the balancing arms and camera and rest about horizontally with the ground. Using thin elastic bands is far better because they allow for finer adjustments. The bands can be held on with circles of card but if you have springs they will give you better results. This system is very light, so if you move forward quickly or into a headwind, air can push against the balancing arm, making the camera point towards the ground. If you know you're going to be moving at speed or into a headwind, with a bit of practice, you can add more weight to the cantilever, so the camera at rest points slightly upwards, but levels out when you are moving forward quickly or into a wind. Thanks for watching and have fun filming.